Okay. See, I would maybe pitch if this was my show that, okay, we lost video for that, but maybe we do an intro yep. and an outro of some sort. Th this was my fear with this game is that <laughs> Emma was going to outproduce every scenario I throw at you. Hello, world. Whoa. Hello, friends. Look at us. We're here. We did it. How are we doing, chat? How's everyone's... How's everyone's Monday? Oh, my God. It's only Monday. I know. Not to be that guy. I mean, Mondays are great, right? We love Mondays. Do you have a... Um, and I'll introduce you in a second. Do you have <laughs> a tough day of the week? My Tuesdays are brutal. My Wednesdays are brutal because High and Mighty and Doughboys both come out on That's the same right. day. So uh, usually my Wednesdays are a mad dash to the sprint, mad sprint to the finish line. But are you a nighttime? I'm a I take a, too much pride in nighttime editing. Yep. Do because you, the world's quieter. Yeah. No one bothers me at 4 a.m. <laughs> There's something about the and I feel naughty. It's probably working at an. And I can't wait to talk to you about this, but working at a network for five years mm -hmm. and then leaving and then going, I can publish whenever I want. Yeah. <laughs> um, fortunately, I don't get any texts from the guys that are like, hey, it's 9 p.m. Where's the episode? I think the rule of thumb with Hollywood Handbook has been as long as when they wake up in the morning, it's there is an episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm good. Same. So for me, it's often the like 9 p.m to 1 a.m. window where you're normally sprinting. like yeah normally <laughs> like around 10 or 11 yeah um but there's just something about late night editing that i really enjoy i think this is a really common thing my our the my boyfriend's a video editor he video edits doughboys he's the same way a lot of days uh neither of us really sit down and start working till like 4 p.m <laughs> really <laughs> like you get up take a walk do my workout, do whatever else I want to do for the day. And then, like, I think when most people are getting out of work to do those things, I'm sitting down to work. To it do feels my things. good. I really enjoy it. And it's also very lucky of the, like, being able to wake up in the morning and go, how do I want to start my day? Yes. And um, if I don't want to start it at 9 a.m., I don't have to. Yes. Which is great. <laughs> now, the... Do you schedule send emails in the morning so it looks like you're working when you're not? I used to do that, <laughs> and now I think I flip it the other way where I'm like, I'll send a fucking email at 2 a.m. I'm sure HeadGum gets way too I many emails. I want you to know I sent this yeah. at 2 a.m. I, I, I used to um, do that. Uh, our friend Sam Kiefer would send a lot of emails at 2 a.m., and Brett Morris would be like, you can't keep emailing us at <laughs> 1.45 in the morning. Um, but I've kind of like, stopped caring about that yeah. and we'll just like if i have an opportunity to send uh emails i'm just gonna send them whatever but yeah. i really like being able to wake up and go all right is this a record morning is this an email morning is this an editing morning yes or is i think it's important video game morning do you do this too i have days where i have like especially with doughboys two episodes a week if i've listened to too much of it i like can't even if I want to, even if I have an episode to mix, I like can't necessarily sit down and mix it first thing in the morning because like my brain's too tired of hearing these same people talk. So I have to be like, you know what? Today we're not mixing. We're just emails and maintenance. <laughs> that and also the like, I can't edit uh, Action Boys right now, but I can listen to your Kickstarter sucks. Right, different show. <laughs> I think it's because you're not actively editing. Uh, it's the like this is a treat because I'm not working. Right. But it is very weird. And this happens several times a week where I go, oh, I need a break from all these podcasts. Yeah. I'm going to go for a walk and listen to a podcast. <laughs> See, you've cracked something I have not cracked is I can't listen to, I don't listen to podcasts outside of what I work on, mostly because the idea of listening to a podcast, I don't know if I can turn my brain off. I think every click or pop I'd hear, I'd be like reaching for my keyboard. <laughs> yeah, that definitely happens where I am clocking clocking like uh silences uhs and ums that i would cut right um that part's not fun no um, but you can eventually turn that part of your brain off and enjoy the podcast yes do you listen I should try it. do you listen <laughs> i can't listen to um most of the time i can't listen to podcasts in the car can you listen while no, you're driving i don't i'm a music person when i'm driving yeah, music or silence too. wagger said this once on an episode a long time ago that he doesn't listen to music in the car sometimes he's just pure silence and everyone called I him a sociopath <laughs> yes. 
I'm, how and, that is not in a movie yet. But as I get older, and maybe it's because I listen to so much stuff for work, but like if we've recorded all day, sometimes, and I only live 10, 10 minute drive from Headgum, so it's not a long drive, but yeah, sometimes yeah. I'll get in the car to go home and I don't plug my phone in or listen to anything. I'm just driving home. Yeah. And that feel, I'm like, I've caught myself doing that as I get older and I'm like, oh wait, maybe Weiger's not so insane. Maybe he's got it figured out in a way, but it yeah, can, no, podcasts in the car, too much for me. I probably should because I think a lot of people listen there, and it they probably do. would help my mixing if I understood what it was like to listen to one It's in the like car. 30% of people listen on their commute. Yeah. But uh, there's just something, about, like, to me, it loses the intimacy of the podcast. Just something about, I think it's because the different speakers. You prefer it in your headphones? I definitely prefer, um, like, AirPods, which I've had so many AirPod issues, has been so frustrating. Like mm -hmm. AirPods or over the ear, like some sort of in ear podcast experience. Yeah. Not um, like out in the wild. No, I can't. I can't just. Uh, hit Do you think play that's because you've trained yourself from recording so many that you have to have headphones on? I think I just, it might be a little bit of a like attention issue where sure. I feel like if I miss something, I have to go back. And if it's not in my ears, I'm more, more, more likely, likely to, to miss. It. miss. Yeah. So then I find myself going back every 15 seconds and then I'm like, uh, I'm not missing this one. And the noise cancellation was an awesome thing yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. I was like, now I can hear everything. Yeah. I do love a noise. Do what headphones you have said, AirPods, do you have over ears that you prefer? Uh, yeah. I use audio technica. Oh yeah. Those are nice too. I have a pair of Sony's that I fucking love. I've yeah. had them for like two years and they're, I think everybody has them now. They're everywhere, but they're, they're, the noise canceling is A+. Plus. I want to get more uh, types of over-the-ear headphones. I, have, I think they're better I'll for show your ears. You, I think that definitely, and I'll show you the ones. I, I've fully worn out the top of it. <laughs> yeah. It looks like I got in a car accident. <laughs> My Sony ones that I have at home that I mix with, sometimes these, like, pads are just peeling yeah, off. Yeah. It's, like, flakes of black whatever just um, all over my yeah floor. i have like black around my ear and stuff and it's like what what happened it's like oh my headphones are especially if you wear them when you're like walking around or working out so you sweat in them yes. at all <laughs> it's crazy hello chat what's we're up on, chat we're on twitch right now this I'll is podcast simulator with my very special guest emma erdbring from doughboys what's and up? high and mighty and so many incredible podcasts I'm honored that she volunteered to come to the studio today. That's so I'm so cool. stoked to be here. You guys should see this place that Kevin's built. It's awesome. I am honored to have Emma here, and I'm so excited. Um, before we get into Podcast Simulator, I would love to just chat your experience with uh, podcast producing and engineering yeah. and editing. I feel like you and I had similar paths in different networks. Sure. When was um, Feral Audio your first? first network like kind what was of, your yeah. very intro into or was it all things comedy well so when i first moved to la i a friend of mine that i went to college with Cerise castle she's an incredible journalist she was cool. working at marketplace oh at the i know time. her yeah yeah Cerise she's is awesome. awesome she's great uh I recorded her on yo is this racist yes yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. she's Cerise really cool. is, she's the best and especially around the election stuff she's like a great resource yeah. to follow if anyone out there is looking for that um or if you're trying to ignore it she's still <laughs> super dope um she was your roommate she was not my roommate but we were good friends in college just kind oh, of the cool. same same group of friends and we partied a lot together in college and then when we when i moved out here she was working at marketplace uh in the i think in the journalism department writing and then cool. uh they needed freelance engineers and none of the people who were on their engineering team at the time were women it was all guys and yeah. she was like would you like an intro and i was like hell yeah so mm -hmm. i ended up working at marketplace which is kind of a podcast but kind of a live radio show a yeah. little bit of both i think i know someone else that does that that did that too yeah it's like an economics radio show that they turn into a podcast after it's live every day so okay. it was kind of podcast adjacent and then feral audio was my first like network how I long guess. did you do marketplace before feral or were you doing them at the same time they were kind of at the same time i think marketplace was first and then i was driving because that was just part-time and i was driving lyft in my off time to like make rent there you go yeah <laughs> and a lyft passenger that i picked up was also an audio engineer who had just moved to la from san francisco and was l looking for work and we ended up talking we actually ended up getting coffee to just talk about cool jobs and stuff wow. and then he actually got the job at feral audio and then which was a part-time job and then he got a full-time offer and he called me and was like do you want this part-time job shit, if i send crazy. it your way would you do it and i was like yeah absolutely so that's how i got feral which is Completely insane. <laughs> that is so wild. I don't think I've gotten a single job since I graduated college by applying to it. <laughs> wow. It's always like been a, like a word of mouth or a connection yeah. of some sort. <laughs> uh, my similar experience to that is when I was in uh, high school, um, our 
house phone got a voicemail from someone that said, Hi, Thomas, it's Rosemary. It's Grandma Rosemary. I'm just checking when you're going to mow the lawn. Call me back. Oh, my God. I called back. Hey, Grandma. I said, I'm not your grandson, but I would love to mow your lawn <laughs> if you, like, live in the area. She lived 10 minutes away. That's so funny. I mowed her lawn for five years. Whoa. She said, come over on Friday. I don't even think my grandson likes mowing the lawn. I said, cool. <laughs> I was, de like, desperately looking for work. That's um, also how I made my money when I was in high school. I mowed my parents' lawn. Hell yeah. And whatever lawn I could get a hold of. <laughs> and so... I came over like that Friday. She was 93. I think I mowed Cute. her lawn from age 93 to 98. She wow. lived forever. Um, a dream, honestly. That first Friday, she was like, really good. You want to come back next weekend? And then I did it every summer from whatever years those were. But like 14 to like Did 19. you ever meet her grandson who she was supposed to call that day? <laughs> no. <laughs> and there would be times where she'd be like, can you do it this weekend? And it was the summer. So sometimes I'd be like, oh, I'm going on vacation with my family. Yeah. And she'd be like, do you have any like friends that could like she. So, I so would this have, is really your introduction to podcasting because you were having to cover yourself and book I was, people. I was covering myself. <laughs> I was hiring my friends. So my friends. So you're producing this woman's lawn. Yes. This, this <laughs> honestly is the early stages of me getting into. There was coordinating schedules and um, basically hiring freelancers. Um, so shout out to Rosemary. Well, um, I never thought about, but my lawn mowing was my first freelance business. <laughs> that and babysitting. I never thought about it that way, but it really was. <laughs> babysitting was so fun. It really was. Um, okay, so you did Marketplace yeah. and Feral Audio. You got the gig through uh, a Lyft passenger, yeah. which is so fascinating. I did not know that about you. That's super cool. This is why you should talk to your Lyft drivers. Or don't, whatever. Yes. It's a different world. That was six years ago, <laughs> seven years ago. Um, I don't even know. <laughs> the... The for me with Lyft drivers, I have my AirPods in and Uber drivers. Yeah, I usually do too. It's usually my decompressed time. <laughs> and then it's kind of up to them. Like sometimes they'll try to talk, and I'll I'm a, I'm a little short. But if they keep pushing, I I will not like begrudgingly give in. I'll be like, okay, well, you clearly want to talk. It's a vibe so, thing. Yeah, like if totally you're if you have a good vibe and I'm enjoying what you're saying, then like maybe we'll have a great talk. But yes. then I've also like had people try to like pitch me their screenplays, which is funny because I can't do shit with your screenplay. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know why you're pitching it to me or like the political conversations that happen uh -huh. with Uber and Lyft drivers. Like I don't know if anyone's mind has been changed or anyone decided to vote for someone in the back of an Uber. I could yeah. be wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong. But uh, on a ride, I'm worried about you if that's what happened. Mom a shelter like oh my god i guess i'm gonna vote for kamala yeah um, i was undecided until this <laughs> uber driver decided to to educate me um <laughs> the uh, uh um the uh lost my train of thought sorry that's um, okay oh the um uber drivers yeah so if they if they push enough i'm like down um yeah. but uh Leah's extremely friendly and will talk to every Uber driver the entire ride. I and get that vibe. I wish I had that uh, ability. No, my partner, sadly, Mike, is the same way. He's more of a talk to strangers kind of person, which is funny. I used to be a bartender, so I used to love talking to strangers. And yeah. now I'm just like, no, this is my quiet time. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, like I protect that. my peace maybe too much. <laughs> Me too. Uh, definitely feel you there. So you started at Feral. Was yes. Doughboys the first Feral show you did? Or no, were there, I actually was didn't it Nash work. Was it Butte? Nash Butte was one of the first ones. Yeah. And I didn't work on Doughboys when I worked for Feral. I only found Doughboys at the end of. So when Feral fell apart yeah. and crumbled to the ground on Christmas Day 2018. I remember that day. <laughs> uh, it was an interesting Christmas. I was like at home like, yay, Christmas is cool, but also don't know if I have a job, don't know if I can pay rent come January 1st. I think I this texted you like, hey, just checking in. I know we haven't really met, but just wanted to <laughs> like, see are how you you're okay? doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Also, uh, Merry Christmas. Also, yeah, Merry Christmas. It was a, it was an interesting time. Yep. Um, but our mutual friend Yusong was working for Doughboys at Feral, and I had worked on a couple of shows with Yusong outside of Doughboys. And so when that all fell apart, mm -hmm. Yusong hit me up and was like, we need an editor. Cool. Can you help out for a little while while we figure this out? And I was like, yeah, I'll come hang out for a bit. And yeah. then I just never left. Wow. <laughs> and so here we are. And that was eight 2018. Years later. Yes. I started officially working for Doughboys in January of 2018. I had mixed a few episodes before that because Yusong would text me randomly and be like, in a panic, this episode comes out tomorrow. I haven't heard from... Our producer, can you put this together for me? And so for I sure. like panic, put a few episodes together. Yep, but I, there. you've done that. You don't yep. listen to the episode when you do that. You just slap it and send it. Yeah. So here I didn't really listen to those, but you know. And then did they go straight to Headgum? Because I remember no. they were doing like pitches. Were they independent for a little? We bit? We were independent for like six months, and they they joined with Headgum. I think 
July or June of that sure. year. I think it was June because I joined HeadGum with them. I came with them to HeadGum, and then I started working on High and Mighty shortly after that. But you were still a freelance, right? Yes, I technically yeah. still am. Me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it is funny working on several shows at a network and being like, "Oh, I don't." I'm. Still I have one show that's not a HeadGum show, and that's the only. The otherwise, I'd be fully a full, pretty much a full time HeadGum employee. Which show is that? Ask Rana. Oh yeah, with yeah, Brian yeah. Safi and Jess Chapman. I was yeah, thinking about that show today. Um, I was mixing it before I left here. Actually, I owe them an export that I didn't have time to do before I left. Oops, sorry, guys. They're in the chat. Like, where is she? <laughs> the um, stems are uploaded if you're looking for those. <laughs> so let's talk about Doughboys. You joined in, you started full time with them in 2018, 2018 yeah. January 2018. Crazy. Um, they, at that time, did the Patreon already existed, right? Yes, it did. And then were, did you immediately were like doing the bonus episodes on Tuesdays, mm -hmm. the free feed on Thursdays. Yep. And um, you song was still producing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I was pretty much just engineering. Engineer then. and yeah. editor? Yeah, I was just like, engineer Emma was my thing then. And then when you song left, I took over producing. Um, and then uh, you weren't doing High and Mighty yet. Not yet, no. Um, how was the... What else was I working on then? I don't even remember. <laughs> Natch Butte? Yeah, Natch Butte. Yeah. I kept Natch Butte. They Chad, let's just take a moment that I know Emma's uh resume better than she knows. <laughs> <What's her own. laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. There was a couple of other feral shows that I worked on, like that were smaller. Uh Ding Donger with Matt Bronger was one that I think is <laughs> over. <laughs> um, I produced a whole se or you song produced it. I edited a whole season of a show called Whiting Wongs that was with Dan Harmon yeah, and yeah, Jessica yeah. Gao. That yeah, didn't yeah. last very long, but we did that. There's a bunch of Feral shows that I kind of got stuck on here and there. And then mm -hmm. uh, they became Starburns audio shows. But then when I went with Doughboys, they didn't love that I went with Doughboys when they left. So yep. they took some of those shows away. And then I had to fight really hard to keep. A little similar with the uh, Hollywood Handbook Earwolf experience. Yes, I'm sure you know the vibe. Yep. Uh, yeah, I had to fight really hard to keep Natch Butte. And then eventually they strong armed me out of that too. And sure. that was that was not my choice to leave. That was definitely uh, theirs. Sure. But yep. it is what it is. And then... I know that show is over. Was Jackie mm -hmm. independent? She wasn't with them the whole time. She was ended she? up leaving them and going. I think she just went Patreon. Just Patreon. Yeah, I don't right. think yeah. she went to another network. And I do think her Patreon's still active. It's not necessarily Natch Beauty. It's just Jackie. But cool, you know, cool, if you're cool. into the beauty, the vegan yep. beauty space, you'll be into Jackie. Jackie's the best. She's great. So uh, you've been freelance mm -hmm. since 2018. Uh, I went freelance in 2021. And I do you like it better I than full time. Yeah. I love it. Me too. Um, there's some pros and cons for sure. Um, Security, stability, benefits. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all of those things were, were pretty cool that I might kind of missed. But um, the kind of biggest pro and con to me was the guardrails of the schedule yes. of these kind of specific deadlines that I had with like things needed to be sent at certain times. I had to attend. X amount of meetings every week. Meetings uh, really piss me off. <laughs> yeah, and especially... <laughs> Most meetings can be uh, emails. That is a true fact. <laughs> that, and I don't know if you had... I'm sure you did. The calls with advertisers, that's like... Yes. We're really excited that HelloFresh booked a spot on Hollywood Handbook. Can we have a 15-minute conversation with you about Where they tell you this? what a meal kit is. Yes. Basically. And you're like, okay, yeah. um, that mm -hmm. sounds like a meal kit. And they're like, the company was started. And it's like, no, 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 no. Um, I can read all this if I want to read it. <laughs> yeah. And and I think that's kind of gone away. But I, remember, I get them every once in a while for like new advertisers, but yeah. not very often. I had it a lot in the beginning with We're Here to Help. And I think it was partly because it was a new, new show, show yeah. and a big show. Yeah. And so they definitely wanted to do a lot of chats. But then that kind of died down, which was cool. Advertising and podcasting has changed a whole lot. I think even in the perfectly six, set six me years. up for the next thing, which is. <laughs> Uh, the advertising relationship with host is super fascinating to me. And also, and I was yeah. talking with Matt about this last week, I think Doughboys deserve so much credit for giving podcasters confidence to go independent. Because wow. I think like five years ago, there felt like such a pressure to be on a network yes. to be credible. Yeah. And I don't feel that way anymore. No, I think you can be an independent podcast now and people don't roll their eyes at that. But they definitely did that. I think a lot of independent podcasts, even seven years ago or whatever, were yeah. 
uh, sounded like shit. It was a lot of like really cheap microphones yep. in bad spaces. And so yep. that's what people thought independent meant shitty. And yep. now that's not true. People build beautiful studios like this in their backyard oh, yeah. and you don't need a network necessarily. And I learned over the years that what a network does is the back end, which if you have a technical mind at all, you can figure out yeah. RSS feeds and all that stuff. Yeah. If you don't want to figure that out, network's great for you. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, or advertising, like getting ads can be really difficult to do on your own. Well, and that's kind of what's been interesting about things like Gumball and Midroll mm -hmm. is I think the switch for... Midroll is like Earwolf's Gumball, right? Exactly. Yeah, okay. Um, but the thing I think that they do that's smart, and uh, chat, we are going deep in the weeds here, but this is what I want to talk about. I know to, you love it. Yeah, you, you freaks love it. <laughs> um, what I like about that is uh, you can be an independent show and still get ads yes um so like i've worked on independent shows that have been with uh gumball hollywood handbook was independent but we still had mid-roll ads for mm -hmm. a year and um so like those are technically like indie shows that sure. aren't on a network but still had ad yeah. revenue which was we got cool. some ads from atc got us a few ads when doughboys was independent when we were in between like kind of in that in-between space yeah. and like it was funny the people i knew were like oh doughboys is independent like here you want to do a spotify ad here we got this for you i think yeah. they were trying to kind of swoon them one way or the other for sure kind of pick them up at, at the at their network or whatever but it is possible i myself have never gone out and gotten an ad without the help of a network have you uh yes uh but what only, was that like only because <laughs> well they i guess reached out I, it was just like like a specific brand yes, thing. Yeah. Um where um actually we were talking about these felt right uh things. Oh, I yeah. did DM them and they were down to do stuff for here to help, but they wanted it to be like socials, which I understand. Um but Well, that's I, another way it's changed is so many podcasts or videos now your yeah. ad buys are different. Yeah. Which is a whole it's a whole different world. <laughs> yeah, and like um booking ads with the social like the instagram account being part of it is really fascinating that's like a new thing that i've had that to costs do. extra <laughs> yeah that it's like okay for x amount of extra money yes. this ad will also run as like an instagram story and even more versus if it's a, a grid main. post yeah, yeah exactly it's so <laughs> weird um I know, and then you see, I see people doing ads in there, and I'm like, get your cash, but also, I hate this. Yeah, I'm like, you're a fucking sellout, and then if I get the email, I'm like, oh, cool. I'm like, yeah, cool, nice. I'll post that, whatever. Yeah. Um, I say that, and then, like, any weed company that's like, we'll send you free weed if you post about it, I'd be all over it. So. I got some this week. I'm, I'll give you, I got a, a couple extra uh, cans. I don't know if that's the right word. Oh, uh, gummies. Um, oh, gummies, hell yeah. We just started making edibles, and by we, I mean my boyfriend Mike started making edibles, <laughs> and it's a Hell fun, yeah. it's a fun journey. <laughs> Wait, we kind of skipped over. Where was all things comedy in that world? So all things comedy was that was another. So Feral falling apart was like the best thing that ever happened to my career. <laughs> so I was working on a podcast. That's what I feel there. like with me leaving uh, your wall. Yeah. So like you know it was a mess, but thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. I was working on a show there that was super super niche called Los Feliz, the podcast with Morgan Murphy and Robin Shore. Okay. Um, this is about the neighborhood of Los Feliz, the local politics of Los Feliz. Like if you don't live there, it was not necessarily for you. So it was like super niche little podcast, but I loved working with them specifically Morgan Murphy and I got along really well. She's awesome. She did. She um, is the best. Once and yeah. Was really she's cool. so fun. And she, uh, when, she, when everything happened at Feral, they chose to take their podcast to ATC, which yeah. is like a stand ups network. And so it was perfect for Morgan. And when she went, they were like, yeah, we'll take it. And she, her, one of her stipulations was that I come with that. She was like, we still want Emma to be yeah. our engineer. So you have to hire her too. So I went and interviewed there to do that show. And then they were like, we actually could use some help in our studio with some other shows. Are you interested? And I was wow. like, yeah, absolutely. So again, I didn't apply for anything. I just showed up yeah. because someone was like, we're bringing you with a big endorsement. <laughs> yeah. And then I ended up working for then that the Los Feliz podcast didn't make it much longer. Uh, and then I ended up working for ATC until the, until COVID, basically. And yeah. then, you know, life. Um, kind of general podcast question that I was asking, Matt. Are there things, uh, what are, th and this is a very dumb softball-y question, but just like kind it. of overall, what are things that you really enjoy about podcast producing mm. and what are things that drive you nuts? Um, 
things I enjoy. I enjoy the I get get to meet a lot of very cool people. I yep. get to talk with a lot of really cool people and I get to listen to a lot of very cool conversations, not just what's on podcasts, but the conversations the hosts have with the guests outside of the room That's or outside fine. of the microphones. Like if it's a good conversation on pod, the off pod conversation was probably even better, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is fun. I feel like I get to be in the room with people that I maybe wouldn't have otherwise been in the room with yet as Same. like yeah. young in my career or whatever. And mm-hmm. so that's very cool, like to meet and network with people. And then I've got to meet people like you and Apodaca yeah, yeah, yeah. and all of these people. And the, I find that that people in the podcast world, especially over here at HeadGum, where we have a lot of improv improv people from yeah. the improv world, it's a very collaborative environment. So if we're having an issue with our feed or you're having an issue with your feed or we're having this or that, it's like I don't feel like I'm giving away my secrets to talk about stuff or like no, we it doesn't all feel cagey at all. Text and yeah. like figure it out together. Yeah, it doesn't feel cagey at all. I think uh, AJ from Blank, who uh, who assistant edits some stuff yeah, for you and Blank Check, we had yeah. a whole Zoom chat last week where yeah. we were like talking like inside baseball stuff and it's very collaborative. We're all like down to help each other, whereas... I think other uh, industries are less so, are much especially more in Hollywood. Yeah. yeah, it's very cutthroat in a lot of places here. And so I find the, the podcast world is a little more relaxed. I think because it's a lot of people's side hustle, even yeah. though it's my main hustle. Same. Most people are like very relaxed because like this isn't their whole thing. <laughs> so here's my hot take. I, I made this uh, proclamation, I would say three years ago, not very publicly, um, but I guess this is a great opportunity to do it. My favorite people to work with in podcast, this is their third most important thing. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Yeah. They have, like, a main gig. They have, whatever, friends, family, like, Mm -hmm. an active personal life. And then then their podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And the people I've worked with that, it is the 11th most important thing or the first most important Both thing suck. <laughs> have been extremely stressful on like yeah. either end of it. Right. Like I'm getting too much support and I need you to back off or I'm not getting any support and I need you to like pick up the phone. <laughs> and not even the like someone in the middle is good because in the middle is like six. Apathetic. Six is like still kind of hard. Yeah. Like you still like, aren't answering things I need you to answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can I get like a five maybe or a four? The like three to four has been awesome because I think the people like that in my life are um, there's just a trust that so much of the job is the communication. Yes. Trust is a huge thing. I've thought about this a lot, actually, in recent uh, recently, like yeah. just thinking about my shows and shows I've worked on in the past and like what I want to do in the new year and everything. And like the amount of trust, like I'll use Doughboys, for example, the amount of trust that Doughboys have in me. They have I don't think they've ever listened to an episode that I've mixed or edited, <laughs> which is fine. I don't expect them to. Yeah. But it's there's a certain level of trust where they're like, we just trust that Emma's going to do what she needs same, to do with yeah. it. And so we're going to let her go in the same way that like I'm going to trust that Wagger is ready with all the info he needs to intro the guest when he shows up, because that's his part of his of the of the thing. And yep. like Mitch is just going to show up and be funny because that's his. Th- you know what I mean? Like yeah, everyone sure. has their their job and their role and there's got to be trust in it. And I think same thing where it's like if it's your third most important thing, you're not thinking about it all the time. So you're not up my butt. You're just trusting me to do my job yep. in the same way. I'm trusting you to show up ready to do yours. But and that's great. <laughs> but you will if I text you. Maybe you won't respond immediately, but you will respond that day yeah. or like within a few hours. Yeah, like within a reasonable amount that, of time. That type of flow is super helpful. Yes. And then the same thing. I Like today, November 4th, 2024, I will confidently say none of my hosts listen to the episodes before they come out. And I would say of the eight hosts I'm working <laughs> with, maybe one of them is listening uh, to the shows. Yeah. Um, which is like totally fine because it's, it's the same thing. It's like it's complete trust of um, they listen to it like when they want to, not because yeah. they have to. Or to check to. an edit or something to make sure everything got out that they wanted yes. out or whatever. I totally get that. Like we have we've had a we had an episode recently where with the election coming up, we were like we're, we've banked a bunch. So like making jokes back in June where this week is the election. You're like, yeah, maybe you don't want to talk about yeah, Trump yeah, that yeah. much or whatever it yep. is. And like just being extra aware and sometimes hosts will go back and be like, hmm, we recorded this a while ago. Cause I have a couple of shows that like ask Rana will bank like that too. And That's then they'll awesome. be like, you know what? This thing we talked about three weeks ago is not as relevant now. So let's just cut it. And like, they'll double check stuff like that. But for the most part, yeah, I think it's, it's a very much built on trust. And if you can't trust the person with it, then like you have the wrong crew. Totally. I think. And it's, it's not a fun environment to work in. Uh, I'd love to talk to you about banking episodes. It's mm-hmm. a thing that, I want to know with your 
experience with it. Mm -hmm. I'm super jealous of it. And I'm trying to push my shows to do it more. Interesting. Um, do you like it? Because I, I kind of feel like it is a, from an outsider's perspective, it's really stressful probably for that month. Yep. There's, I, I, <laughs> I would totally believe there's like burnout throughout that month, mm -hmm. but you have it. Um, yes. Actually, I should, I should say here to help uh, banks a lot of calls, which is yes. great. And then we can kind of. It's a very bankable. Uh, yeah, it's super evergreen. Of, yeah, like uh, the calls setup of it stuff. is very bankable. So we're able to bank a, a ton of stuff, which we have, which has been awesome. Yeah. Other shows, it's a lot more challenging to bank. What's your experience with banking? Obviously, um, Mitch is super busy, successful yeah. actor. So you have to. Yeah, we actually this. So this year we banked more than ever before. Uh, I'm sure listeners know it. Yeah. Everybody at HeadGum knows it. Yep. People who don't want to know it, know it. Anybody around us in June heard it. <laughs> uh, it was an experience for sure. I think there's a sweet spot. And I think I always wanted to get my shows banked. I've always wanted to like be ahead, get ahead so that like maybe I can get a week off. Because you get this. Podcasts come out 52 weeks a year. I If I want a week off, I have to work double time for a week to get that week off. So it's yeah. not really a week off. I worked dub I worked 80 hours last week. I know. That's why the it holidays is. always suck because it's like the... You yes. know, the worst, the most <laughs> stressful time in the podcast world is like the first two weeks of December. Yes, it is from Thanksgiving until like December. I mean, whenever Christmas Eve is, I am sprinting yeah. usually. And we unlock episodes from Patreon. So we take a few weeks off the main feed for Doughboys. And our listeners sometimes get mad. Hey, if you're out there, I get it. You want new content. I understand. I yeah. want a week off. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's, it's a, a weird thing to be like, yeah, I know it sucks. We're just like giving you stuff you already heard, but also like, I need to breathe and there's no other way for me to do this. Because in order for me to, to genuinely take a week off, I yeah. have to find someone like you or yeah. Rochelle or someone who can like come in here and like take over Handle what I'm it, doing. For sure. And even then, I'm probably going to be checking in all the time. It's not yeah, your yeah, normal yeah. show. Not fully like, out. yeah. So there's really no way for me to just like be fully off. And I thought with all this banking that we did that I'd get there and I found I was still editing week to week. It yeah. just, it, because having 10 episodes in the bank is great, but I still can only listen to so much at a time and then I got to take a break and like yeah. oh, oh two episodes a week is a lot and then with my other shows it was I didn't get to edit ahead as much as I wanted to um that said being ahead by like a couple of weeks I do think is nice because then like for sure I'm not you're not going okay we have to record Tuesday because it's got to come out Thursday yeah, and like yeah, it'd yeah. be actually better if we could do Monday but if we can't we could do Wednesday it'd be really hard and then like that panic goes away yep uh, so there's a sweet spot. Being uh, as we were five months ahead, too far, I yeah, think. I think we learned it's too hard, partially because of what you were saying, the burnout in the banking process where mm -hmm. we were recording. I think there was some, some times at the end there where we were like pretty irritated. to Not irritated yeah. with each other, but it was just it's like. It's like it's checked out a little bit. It's, yeah, well, it's way I've, harder. I've been in the studio doing this for four days. I have three other shows I have to work on that are yeah. completely neglected because I'm here doing this. And then like I the that panic didn't work <laughs> out so well. But once it was all recorded. It was an interesting time. <laughs> Something that I've experienced with banking that has been kind of fun and, and I feel like unique is so I edit Action Boys. I don't record Action Boys other than they do like one episode a month in the studio. Right, right. And um, it's like High and Mighty. I don't record High and Mighty. I just edit it. But for me, that they have they typically will record maybe two or three episodes out. Yeah. And maybe it's because it's three-hour episodes. Those it's very, are long. It's very intimidating. Yeah. So I like to get ahead of it. But there's something about the fact that I haven't heard the calls. I'm editing it, hearing it. Sorry, not calls. The episode. I'm hearing it live for the first time. Right, so you're kind of enjoying it, too. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> it's not like, I, I, yeah, I remember all this. Um, there's something about... Editing it, editing it, and hearing it for the first time. Definitely that I'm, different. I'm a little more excited to edit. Absolutely. Whereas, like, the 20 banked calls we have for Here to Help, I booked all of those, and I recorded all of them. Um, I've heard it already. I've heard it already. <laughs> yeah. And so it's a little harder to be, like, excited to edit a thing that you've already recorded. Yes. I feel the same way, especially if it's a fast, what we call, like, a fast flip where we're recording it today, releasing it same in a couple turnaround. days. Yeah. yeah, or, like, a couple day turnaround yep. where, like, I have no distance from it. So I'm literally, we recorded it this morning. I'm at home. I'm processing. I'm importing. And now I'm listening to it 
now the same thing I just experienced four hours ago. And yeah. It's like a weird mind fuck. But on the flip side of it, now I'm like this week I mixed I've been mixing episodes that we recorded in June. Mm-hmm. And that also feels incredibly jarring. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm the- mixing episodes from before Biden even dropped out. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's that's the weird thing, too, is sometimes and I've had this with here to help calls. They were we released a call that uh, we recorded a year ago. Oh, and weird. I was like, I genuinely don't remember any of this. And uh, it was so it feels it was, like a new episode. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then it like flipped the other way, like exactly what you're saying. Where I was like, well, now this feels like a new call in the opposite way that I've just like, I don't remember this. And yeah. So I'm kind of hearing it live. Um, but yeah, the, the banking stuff is very fascinating. I think to there's me. definitely a sweet spot. I think there's yes. a push from people to get banks, and I totally get it. But I think in a I mean, it depends on the show too. If you have a topical show at all, yeah. banking's hard. Yep. Really hard. And I think especially in the world that we live in now where like the 24-hour news cycle is now like a 2-hour news cycle and things are changing constantly, it's like really hard to be topical ahead of time. Yeah, yeah. Like I think you can be topical like 2 weeks out and that's maybe it. <laughs> uh, that and um I'll tell you what it is off mic, sorry chat, but I was talking to someone who I love that. Um <laughs> they record for three to four months and they bank their entire year so they do like january february march we jokingly pitched this in the doughboys room once i don't know if it was on an episode or not like where we do a few months on and then the rest of the year off kind of like what we did this year and i think i would say i think it would be more possible if we knew ahead of time that that's what we were doing i think this year mish got a shoot schedule and we were like it was reactionary let's figure this out and it was just like go 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 and we didn't get to like plan it i think we learned a lot though yeah from the process sorry i cut you off no 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 just that (laughs) it's um i and i I agree with you if it didn't feel reactionary like if it felt like a choice yes um it probably would have been more likely um something uh action boys did that i really enjoyed and i hope they do more and i and they might is um they rented a cabin and recorded like five episodes i love that and they just like watch movies together and then recorded see that's uh, fun too in that vibe it's like uh like a sleepover with your best friends watching movies that kind of works great and you can like that i feel like their vibe's probably even better because they've been like hanging out with each other in a cabin instead of just like walking into a studio or whatever um but i am interested in the idea of maybe not even the cabin thing but of just like talking with hosts and saying like hey in a month Let's do a Monday, Wednesday, Friday where we do two to three episodes each day and we'll have six to eight weeks of yeah. episodes banked and then we can like take a little time Are off. Are you trying to do that in preparation for the holidays at all? Um, I should. Because um, I've been thinking about it because every year I, I try to think about it November. earlier and earlier. That's I know smart, it's November. Emma. It's already November. Yeah. Um, I, like I noticed on the calendar, Wire's other show, Get Played, another headgum show, they've been banking for the holidays, I think. I've been seeing like December episodes on yep, the calendar, yep. and I was like, I fucking love that. Let's mm-hmm. get get these holidays under wraps. I, yeah. Mitch is still away, so I can't, but I know. Uh, I'm hoping to. <laughs> but like, I that would be awesome. And I think if you knew about it ahead of time and you could like mentally prepare or prepare your calendar of your for your other requirements yeah. or your other like, appointments and things that would be great instead of the panic emma it is so (laughs) funny how much of the job is scheduling i have said this for years any podcast i've ever been on when people ask me the hardest part of podcasting i'll look them dead in the eyes and say scheduling scheduling is the hardest part yeah scheduling sucks if you have a job where you're nine to five everyone just shows up every day nine to five they're there they're captive you get them that's great not not here the amount of times we'll have things on the schedule and then one person's thing changes and we got to move it but then this person can't do that so now this person can't do so now we got to change the topic because we promised the guest that topic and it's it totally can fuck the whole world up <laughs> or even like i've worked on shows where it's like we record every monday at 12 so like we're going to have a recurring thing yes yeah, so that's make what it we easier. try to do for doughboys because it is a little bit easier yeah. but then the sometimes the issue with that can be the guest is like can you do 2 30 exactly and it's like <laughs> no not really um that's I, also something I think is hard to like, you want to accommodate your guests, but then at a certain point you have to be like, well, no, this is what we have available. I'm so surprised. Did you know that for years, Sean and Hayes recorded handbook Saturdays at 10 a.m. for like five years? Be- maybe? Just because that was easiest scheduling wise. They with, like, both guests worked on stuff? shows Monday to Friday. Right. So they're like, we can't really do nights. We're definitely not going to do mornings. When they have kids. Uh, this was before they had kids. Oh, okay. Um, this was at Earwolf and they both worked on shows. 
So they just did yeah. Saturdays at like 10 or 11 a.m. And that's how I got introduced in their world was um, part of my job at Your Wolf was like I took photos um, of every recording and mm -hmm. posted them. And yeah, I like felt, the social stuff. I felt bad that the Saturday shows were getting neglected. And I lived really close to Earwolf. And I had nothing. I was like 23. I was like, I have nothing going on. You're so, eager. You're ready. Yeah, and I was excited, <laughs> whatever. And I met them like once or twice and was like, they're nice guys. I'll, I'll swing by, whatever. And then so I took pics and then they included me in the more and more of the episodes. And so that's kind of how the handbook world oh, started. Oh, that's fun. But it was because they See, were. See, again, you didn't apply for shit. No, you just showed I up. was just taking pictures <laughs> and they were like, he's taking pictures under the table. He's a pervert. And I was, and so then there we go. Um, and now I Podcasting have Podcasting is so fun. Your boss can call you a pervert. <laughs> yep. And um, everyone's cool with it. Everyone's all right with it. And it becomes okay, I tell your... my bosses to fuck off and fire me and they won't. So. <laughs> yeah. That's. I love that. Do you do you ever listen to your Kickstarter sucks? Uh, I have. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Their I mean, producer, they're great. Dan, every episode tells them to fuck off. Yeah. And it is so funny to me. I love Every it. single time. Um, so fun. The. Um, Everybody go tell your boss to fuck off. Yeah. If you can. <laughs> if you um, can. But uh, what else? That's kind of all the... But yeah, no, scheduling is the hardest part of podcasting, for sure. Um, I also want to give I want to give as much credit as I can before we get into Podcast Simulator. Um, the Patreon, obviously, um, is incredible, and I think inspired, like, probably thousands of people yeah, to be Patreon's like... Yeah, Patreon's pretty tight. I can do this without uh, needing a network and relying on a network. I also think there's a special, there's a certain kind of safety behind in Patreon. Like you're not, it's not free for the world. So you can feel, I think people feel a little bit more. Yeah. They can be more vulnerable behind the paywall, which makes for a different kind of podcast. Uh, I'm sorry to keep saying this on the chat. I'll tell you another off mic thing. <laughs> I just subscribed to a Patreon. The amount of shit talk on the Patreon is like, I'm like, man, these guys are like naming names. Wow. And it's very fun. Good for them. Um, I love that energy. <laughs> Should I say it? I'll say it. I don't care. Um, you can bleep it later. <laughs> uh, probably not on Twitch. Um, Stradio Lab is a very funny podcast, and they're very devious. They got a juicy Patreon. They have a juicy Patreon. Cool. And I subscribed, and I was like, this is fucking awesome. That is awesome. Um, I don't know if the Doughboys Patreon is technically juicy, but maybe not in that they, way. Juicy in a different way. <laughs> um, they, they, I think they're a little more comfortable uh, maybe not comfortable is the right word. They've but definitely told stories where they're like, it's behind the paywall. It's yes. fine. <laughs> and Handbook does that as well, too. Yeah. Uh, I was, uh, Stradio Lab has raised the bar in a very cool way. I like um, that. That's a lot of fun. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, the scheduling is a huge part of it. Um, you guys are killing it with the Patreon. And I want to give you more credit for, I think the Doughboys is like an extremely creative show for Thank something you. that has a premise of like, we're just doing fast food chains. There is so many new and fun segments that you guys bring in yeah. that I think so many other producers, probably myself included, would start to go like, let's just play the hits. And um, It's very easy to play the hits, especially with segments. Uh, yeah. I have to give a lot of credit for segments up to my associate producer, Amelia Marino. She is... She's the best. She was... Getting her on the team was like the best breath of fresh air we totally. could have asked for at the time. I don't think we realized we needed it, but we did in a yeah. way. And her her sense of humor and like creativity has been such a plus up. It's also, and I'm sure you can relate to this, been helpful to have someone else there to help with that stuff. Because when Absolutely. you are doing it all by yourself or mostly alone, you don't have time to be like, let's come up with a whole new segment. It's like, I don't have time for that. So we're just going to play the hits. <laughs> that, let's plug and play the thing we know works. <laughs> that's been like the most exciting thing to me over the last like three years like Robert who's in the chat helped a ton with Hollywood Hell yeah, DK. and I know helped a ton with with Doughboys yes, as well absolutely. and then with the here to help world we have like a team of like five people or like four it's like uh, AJ who you yes. know um, Caitlin a social media person a video editor a YouTube analytics guy who just focuses on like algorithm Ooh, and I, I had a meeting with him person. this morning and it was super helpful um, you share that contact I will he's <laughs> awesome he's great his name's Josh um the uh, having each having people that have like uh, kind of specialty things of like my thing, YouTube thumbnails. I'm like, fuck, yeah. Um, oh, man, that's I make been... all of our YouTube thumbnails and I would love to Do pass you? that to someone that's else. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's super challenging. And just having um, people that have like specialties is very fun. Yes. I really prided myself and I try not to do this anymore of the like. I could do it all. I could do yeah. that. Engineering, it's editing, really blah, blah, blah. It's really hard to blah. step back from that, that mentality. <laughs> that, and also, like, once you do, you start to realize, like, 
oh, this is so much, not easier, but it takes it's better. so much off your plate. It makes everything better, too, the show better and stuff. And I should give DK the same credit as, like, Amelia. Like, DK brought, when he worked with Doughboys, brought a lot of great ideas for segments like that was very much during the covid times we were recording remote so like dk brought in like the jingle all the way segment where we were watching old commercials old jingles and stuff and like things like that were like adapting to the changing of times like covid made recording and doing podcasts so hard and it was nice to have like this breath of fresh air with new things that work in the new like that new normal where like we're all in different places we're all on zoom and this sucks but like this is a segment we wouldn't have done otherwise because now i can screen share and we can watch this video and yeah. now with the addition of being a video podcast we can like put the we can like play them on screen with us and stuff which is kind of fun but that it is so helpful to have other people around and it's i think dk and amelia would probably both say that when they both started i was I, it's hard for me to be like here you do this for sure without me just like being up your butt for a second be like did you do it right did yeah, you do yeah. it right did you spell that right Over did you spell the that name right did you do that right Are the dates right mm-hmm. uh but then once you can like let that go it's really helpful and so. then you can just focus on like bigger picture things and mm-hmm. like things that you want to focus on. I mean, we talked about a little bit with the uh, Mitch's schedule, but it just, this is an overall thing that I always try to like keep an eye on for me is not getting to like reacting reaction and more, sorry, like more proactive rather than reactive. reactive. Yeah. And so trying to like look ahead of like, okay, I know Christmas is going to suck. It's November 4th. How what are we I doing? Help myself? <laughs> um, because those kind of, things especially in podcast production and especially when it's like maybe not preventable but like make making these decisions now can help future kevin is yes. definitely and then if something thing. blows up in the first few weeks of december you're like well at least i have this yeah. and i did this and it's not all blowing up like you're helping yourself out and i'll get i gotta give weiger this credit he's a very forward thinker yeah, yeah. with these things and he's like uh, that he pitched a thousand double ideas for December episodes this morning in the wow. group chat, just like unprompted. He was like, how about this? How about this? How about this? And I was like, these are amazing ideas. I love this. And I'm like, so stoked that you're thinking about what we should talk about in December. <laughs> it's really <laughs> That's impressive. super, super helpful. And I, Wagger is, he's, he's uh, driving the driving force behind a lot of what we do. Like he's very proactive in that way, which is very helpful to have a host. That's also proactive and not just like, I'm sure you've been on shows where you're thinking proactively, but the hosts are not. And you're trying to be like, no, come with me. Come over here. We're all pitching on the drive to the studio. Yeah. What if we did this with the guests? And it's like, okay, the red light's over. I'll, we'll We'll talk about this when I get there. I got to park now. (laughs) Totally. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. It's already five o'clock. I've taken so much of your time. I'm having such a blast with you. This is a little game that I've invented called, um podcast simulator i'm so excited emma (laughs) as you know sometimes things out of our control can sabotage us Mm -hmm. that's just the nature of the job yep but how we react can dictate our future Mm -hmm. and with that let's begin yeah that was literally the best definition of how to be a podcast producer it's entirely about how you react (laughs) we are playing producer mode of a show called scandal on the menu oh i like it um Let's look a little bit more about the show. Each uh, episode, comedian and food journalist Margot Monroe talks to actors, comedians, and writers about bizarre moments they've experienced during a meal. Mm. From a childhood food fight involving the entire school to a first first date at a hibachi grill gone wrong, Margot and her guest have a lot of fun reliving some of these memorable meals. Plus, Monroe shares some scandalous dinners throughout history as an appetizer before getting into the main course of the guest's juicy story. Did I put juice story? Juice That's story. right. Maybe it's a juice story. It should be a juice story. <laughs> Maybe their story is all about being at like a press juicery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, initial thoughts on this show that you are about to produce. Any anything Sounds like a fun mind? time. Yeah. I like the verbiage that's going on here. Scandals, dinners throughout history as an appetizer is, you know, that's like so fun. I kind of want to start calling Weiger's intro scandalous appetizers. I like it. That's fun. Um, so thanks for blessing up <laughs> my show. <laughs> no, I like this. I think I'm trying to think of my own scandalous, like food story, like restaurant stories now. And uh, my brain's blank, but I'll think of some. Um, what I like about it and pretending like I didn't uh, create this is <laughs> uh, oh, and I, I kind of wanted to talk about this up top with you. I think another really fun part about our job as producers in like the L.A. comedy scene mm-hmm. is we kind of specialize in the we default a little more in the 
interview and conversation shows. Sure. Uh, Leah and I went on a double date with one of her coworkers who's married to a uh, podcast producer and writer. In a different at, world. At Wondery. Okay, different and world. And <laughs> we tried to connect, and it was just, like, super nice guy and honestly is way more impressive. Um, it's a different type of producing, though. Yeah. Um, there's a few people I want to reach out to in 2025 to do this that are like in that are producers of very successful shows that are not comedy. And I think it will become very clear to the chat like, oh, Kevin's like, how job we're is a really bunch of imposters. Stupid. Yeah, he literally records guys like dicking around having fun. And these people do like actual uh, producing real world jobs yes <laughs> casey and i have had this conversation a few times there was one day i think a couple months ago that we both like just it was i don't even know what day of the week it was but it was just like not a good day just yeah. a great day you know you have them you wake up you're like mm, today's gonna suck yeah um we're just like one of those days and we were complaining about a bunch of stuff and then i like looked at casey and i was like too bad our job is to sit here and laugh today <laughs> i was like i don't even know why i'm complaining like i literally go to a studio six hours a week yeah. and laugh and that's my only Another requirement tough day at the office yeah and the rest of the time i'm just at home setting my own schedule so i know me too. Uh, yeah, I know some people who produce at Wondery, and it is a completely different yeah. world. It's kind of the world of like what I experience at Marketplace, yeah. where you have one show that's thirty minutes, but there's a team of fifty-five people that work on it. <laughs> so wild, different world, and challenging. Okay, let's look at your role. But can they get canceled like we can? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's harder. Yeah. Um, okay, you are the producer, engineer, and editor of this podcast. Um, which what's been kind of fun about. Uh, creating these games is deciding who will do what. Like, I think, for instance, yeah. the show that I created with Matt was like a big, flashy celebrity show. Fun. And with that, I was like, well, naturally, a big network would pick that up. Mm -hmm. And with a big network, they're going to have eight people right. assigned to it. So Assuming he, they pick it up before you make, you know, yeah. your first season or whatever. Yep. And so I was like, with that, he probably would just be like a producer and like a co-editor. With this show that or I a also... a supervising producer yep, maybe? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. With this show that I also really like, I see it being like not a like 150,000 downloads an episode, but maybe it's at like 50 or 40 or something. Yeah, we're like a little cult podcast. Exactly. And so because of that, I think you would have to do more of the roles because yeah, I don't think sense. they could afford as one producer, one engineer, and one editor. That's yeah, a lot to and afford. And because you can do that, you're a multi-hyphen uh, talented I'm person. Ready. You can do this. So I can do this. The producer tasks here, you're scheduling the recordings uh, with the host and the guest. Yep, yep. You're sourcing the topics for the scandalous dinner segment. Okay. Um, Let's ask ChatGPT what it thinks. Yep. And uh, <laughs> ChatGPT may or may not be used for this exact game. Working with <laughs> a network on social clips and general marketing. Um, so just kind of general yeah, podcast classic. stuff. Growing the damn thing. Engineer and editor. So far, this is just my job that I already do. Yes, me too. <laughs> I kind of just wrote out my job. I like it. Um, so the network support that they're providing um, is a video editor because it's a video cool, show. Cool, cool. I appreciate that. A booker. However, I see this as a show that the host, Margo. Are booking their friends. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, okay. They're leaning a little more like So the booker their... is really like we can lean on that when we're in a pinch that, or when or we're looking like, for someone big. If I imagine the bookers getting emails from like publicists. So like they're probably forwarding I those, hate those as, emails. as options. I've gotten some wild ones. For I would sure. love for someone to receive those emails for me. If anyone's out there and wants them. <laughs> um, I got one for handbook. I don't remember who it was, but I did respond. Like, do they know what the show was? And then they said like, disregard <laughs> uh my favorite is when they pitch and they talk about how much they love nick and mitch they're so excited they want to book them on dough boys two uh -huh. words two words nope um we get it's a lot from people that think hollywood handbook is a sincere hollywood uh biz podcast and get some insane uh <laughs> guest offers. you should book them and let them think that the show. i know <laughs> uh, they would hate it so much though. oh my god they'd be so um, mad have you ever had a publicist show up for a recording i hate it yeah yeah i had we had one of those and the guest that was showing up and us did not know she was coming she was sat there for two hours for a doughboys episode and i've never seen someone leave faster <laughs> Yeah, it happened she a lot. She had no notes, though, so. <laughs> it happened a lot at Earwolf um, where publicists would book guests with the booker and then would come for the recordings. Now, the nice thing was— Did uh, the guests know that the publicist was coming? Yeah, we okay, normally got, helps. like, the head, heads up, which was nice. And the other nice thing about 
head gum in my last like few years was it had its own separate engineer booth. So at least like what was really tough. They were in the room. Yeah. And I know like you've had that and I've mm-hmm. had that too, where it's like, do you prefer in- that or do you prefer the whole the room? Uh, in, in a different room. Yeah. I, I prefer to be in the room with the talent for recordings, but when like a publicist or like, I want them in a different room. We've had <laughs> recordings where like five people, I've had two recordings this year where like a full entourage came. Yeah. There's like, no room for that. Me. Um, and they, but came, that is how like they those... sat in H too. The the small headgum studio, like a full. T- I was like, this is already small. It's literally so tight when it's like three guests and then me and Casey at the table. I'm like, we can maybe fit one more person in here. It's wild. maybe. And my dog's in there usually. <laughs> she it, takes up the most. It's space. stressful. So you have network support. Cool. Uh, they have a booker. The host is probably going to lean on friends uh, in the beginning. Marketing support, ad support. Any thoughts cool. on this? This is pretty all like over seems the place. Seems pretty good. Stuff yeah, you. seems pretty good. Yep. All traditional stuff. We'll look a little bit at the host here. Okay. Margot Monroe is a comedian and food journalist. They're not super famous by any means, but they have great taste both comedically and foodily, a word I made. I love it. Uh, they're also very nice and uh, who you've already recorded a handful of times on some other shows. So they're good people. So we know we vibe. Yeah, We're we vibing. know we vibe. Okay, cool. Um, and a food journalist, I assume she's got some sort of audience that she's bringing. Comedian, yes. same thing. Sort um, of. So has good taste, is good on mic. It is not like a... We're not totally new to this. We're not totally new. They are not a podcast host. This is their first they've host. They've guested. But they've guested on the show before. Hosting is very different. It is very different. Um, And so for me, I'm a little bit nervous here. For sure. Um, but a thing that goes such a... Oh, it goes a longer way with each year I work in this industry if they're a nice person, I'm willing to try anything. That is everything, especially in podcasting. You're you're yep. together a lot in yeah, weird exactly. ways. And I, like you were saying that Sean and Hayes used to record on Saturdays. For the first few years I worked on Doughboys, Nick was also in writer's room. So we would record at night. We'd do Thursday nights. We'd start at 8 p.m. And we'd do Crazy. two episodes. So oh. we the the schedule is bonkers. And you'll be either doing early mornings or late nights with these people. So like the vibes have to be good. I yep. have to be able to like be like, do you want to grab food? And like get a dinner order together like yep. we want we want that comfort so yeah good good vibes is super important i'd also it's something i tell a lot of shows when they start especially if people haven't hosted podcasts before it's okay to scrap your first episode you can record an entire episode and not release it and that's okay and i, I honestly agree. think it's a good idea get the yayas out and then try again will that get brought up possibly later oh my God, in this yes, game let's do it the first segment Pilot's okay. license is what I call these. I like it. It's time to record the first episode, and Margot throws a curveball at you the night before. Hey, Emma, can we record at a restaurant tomorrow? I got Ooh. us at a table at the Chef's Kitchen, which is my nickname for the studio, by the way. Okay, I like it's it. It's the new hotspot in L.A. It is a new hotspot. W.I.D., what are you doing? Should we do it, or are you like, uh, I don't know. I think, hmm. I think it depends on the vibe of, of the of the restaurant. This restaurant seems pretty chill. <laughs> so yeah. I feel like we could do it. <laughs> it even comes with microphones. Yeah. Uh, we recorded a Doughboys episode once in the Delta Sky Lounge. I remember that. Uh, where we brought all of our mics in and then we left. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. I think you could do this. Uh, I think it would be hard to do it without being super obvious unless you had lav mics on yep. everybody, which yep. would be a way to do it. Uh, like self-recording labs and you could just walk in and no one's the wiser. Yep. I think... Uh, uh, there's a chance a restaurant would have a problem with me like whipping out a bag of gear unprompted, yep. but yep. I could call and ask. And if they say no, then I'd probably see if we could rent some lobs. Uh-huh. So I guess I'd say I would do everything I could to make this work. What a powerful producer. You agree to the big request from Margo. It changes a lot of things, though. Of course it Even does. though you try to deeply the shit out of the audio, Jesus. it definitely sounds like you're recording at a popular restaurant in L.A. Uh-huh. Also, the manager says you can't film in the <laughs> restaurant. Oh, shit. I forgot about video. Aha. So there's no video for the episode, causing some headache with advertisers who bought spots for video as well. Yeah, however, sorry guys. however, Margot loves you now because it was a big ask and you stepped up. Um, and so okay. you have some street cred for the show because you also recorded at a cool new restaurant. So what I do sometimes with these decisions is you get a host grade and a network grade. Okay. So the host gave you an A. The network's pissing me. The network ain't happy with That's you. That's fair. Okay. See, I would maybe pitch 
if this was my show that, okay, we lost video for that, but maybe we do an intro yep. and an outro of some sort yep. that is on video and yep. you put the ads after the intro, which has video. So uh -huh. people who watch see the ads, the advertisers should get their numbers. And then we put in, uh, you know, like a graphic, a waveform of some sort for the part that doesn't have video. This was my fear with this game is that <laughs> Emma was going to out. Are we going to get ahead of it? <laughs> no, 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 not not get ahead of it. You are going to out produce every scenario I throw at you. Um, and I had some of these thoughts too. I was wondering if you were going to do this of like. That's funny well, to see how she, our brains work. Yeah, she has managed to pull this off before. I wonder if she'll say that or go like, "No, it's not worth it." I know I would say it's not worth it. I think um, for the first episode, I probably actually would be like, no, let's stick to the studio for a first episode, having yeah. no, like, vibes. If this was Doughboys and they were like, Emma, could we record tomorrow at the restaurant? Absolutely, I'd figure it out. Yeah, but yeah, that's yeah. a completely different world. <laughs> so. For sure. Um, okay, here's the next scenario. Chef Devin says, uh, oh, by the way, uh, with that, I'm sorry I didn't include this, the chef at the restaurant says he'll do the podcast. Okay, but um, he won't let us film in his restaurant. No. Interesting. Um, Chef I'm Devin, already telling him now. <laughs> um, Chef Devin says he'll tell you all the juiciest stories in exchange if you help him out. Okay. Um, so he agreed to do the show. Okay. Um, and he's like, I'll be a great guest. Uh, sure. He thought it was cool that you guys recorded there. Um, I think it would be cooler if you let me shoot video, but that's okay. I agree. Uh, <laughs> um, but he, he does have a workaround here. He okay. said he's like bummed it. out that there's no shows accurately captured behind the scenes of the restaurant. Okay. Um, and Respect. so it says it's too Hollywood. So in exchange for potentially a great episode, here's the deal Chef Devin makes with you. Okay. He says to you and Margo, you guys got to work a shift at my kitchen. Okay. He says you can record and film the whole day. Okay. So you can now do video if you do this. All right. You can release however much you want. Margo's going back and forth on this. What do you say? And I added here, it's important to note, you are paid a flat rate. You are not mm. hourly. That and, does um, change things. Yes. And uh, you got asked to work a <laughs> shift at this restaurant, <laughs> a restaurant in exchange shift. for uh, this successful chef, Devin, uh, will be a guest and probably do a good episode. So, I mean, this sounds like it would make a really banging video podcast episode. Yes. Sounds like it would be a lot of fun. Also sounds like a lot of work. Margo's going back and forth. I want to know if Margo's worked in a kitchen before because I haven't. <laughs> That's I've a worked good in question. restaurants, but uh, I haven't has, worked she in has. she has. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, I don't know if I want to work a shift. I I'm trying to. I don't know if I see a whole. I could see like uh, maybe we work an hour and you yeah, teach yeah, us yeah. some recipes and we try some stuff. I don't see us working an entire shift. Also, the fact that I'm getting a flat rate, not hourly, for this new show is crazy. I always choose hourly for a new show. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> At um, least until we know what work is involved. Emma is leaning no. I think I'm gonna go no. Don't work she the is shift. Not working the Sorry, shift. Sorry, my guy. This man really trying to get you to work an eight-hour unpaid <laughs> Thank shift? You. <laughs> You've worked at bars before. You get it. I do you, you get it. You know this shit. You respectfully pass, and in result, he opts out of doing the pod. Mm, you're so lost. I say, I think you're kind of getting like bees here. Yeah. Because I don't think Margot also wanted to do this. No, she doesn't seem like she'd be going behind. But also as a food journalist, it probably looks bad that you wouldn't. So yeah, maybe we so should I think she's kind of going back and forth on it, though. But the, also, like, the eight hours of it, it's like, I have to do a whole day of this. Yeah, also, like, I'm not convinced that we're going to make okay food for your clients or yeah. your guests at yeah. your restaurant. So I think it would make more sense if we come in for, like, a prep shift. Yeah. And you show us your restaurant, we do some prep with you the network, instead of a full shift. The, I agree. That would have been the better move. The network is a little annoyed because they're like, that would have been cool. They don't really care. They're, they're like, like, we could have got the fucking video. Yeah, <laughs> and we could have got the video and you opted out. Um, Oops. And they don't care because they were like, we didn't have to work the eight hours. You would have to do it and we would get the content regardless. So they're a little annoyed. I would say this is just kind of like a middle of the road, not an extreme yeah. where Marco's like, fuck this, or the network's like, you guys fucked up. Which I think there's a lot of this in podcasting where you get opportunities that you have to say yes or no to, and like no one's happy with either answer. <laughs> that is the lose lose of it. And then also the, um, and this is hard whenever this happens, of this would be cool, but I, I know the headache isn't worth it. And right. And it actually could 
hurt things. This is actually something that I think a lot of podcast producers probably relate to and other people maybe don't totally get. Is that like, this sounds like it would make a great episode, but you're right. It's a huge headache to get this shot and get this edited. And at the end of the day, we do one of these a week. And is that much work yeah. worth it when next week we're on to the next thing that fast? Maybe not. Uh-huh. This is maybe more of a, we do a bonus thing for YouTube exactly. separately and I not agree. as an episode. I agree. Because this is a lot of work. Okay. We're moving on to the next scenario. Sounds like Kevin and I could produce a podcast together. We agree. We should. <laughs> the show is doing only okay. Only okay. At 30,000 downloads an episode. Okay. The network is not super impressed. It's a new show. The bar is a little higher. And there's a chance they do not renew it for a season two of another 26 episodes. Oh, we're a seasonal podcast. I like it. Margo is sweating this and you want to help step it up. This results in the oldest trick in the producer's handbook that I call Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's podcast unless it's an emergency. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you break out the uh, emergency glass with your tiny little hammer and you get out the big guns, you text the following. Wags, Mitch, what are you guys doing tomorrow at three? Woohoo! Your boys got your back, your back, just like how you've got theirs. I knew they would. Mitch responds, I've actually got this crazy <laughs> dinner story, but it's technically Hanford's. I might just say it's mine for the pod. Weiger doesn't <laughs> respond because it is Sunday. It's true. Do you tell Mitch, sure, I don't care, take credit for the story, or you say, give Hanford credit for I think I'd let Mitch and Hanford work that credit out. They're, you know, sketch partners. I'm sure they've passed stories before. Uh, if Weiger's not responding, maybe we get Hanford and Mitch on and do an episode together, and we do it that way. Or uh, it is Sunday, Weiger doesn't answer his text, but if it's an emergency, I could email him and he might see it. It's so maybe I emailed maybe because I probably would email. This is this is my every show is different, but this is the Doughboys way. You send the email to both Nick and Mitch, uh -huh. and then you also put it in the group chat because Weiger will see the email and the text. Mitch will just see the text. This is what's fun about this game with Emma. I have two very <laughs> limited options, and she presented a third better option <laughs> that would which is Mitch and Hanford that, that would objectively solve all of the issues. <laughs> Unfortunately, you have to choose between. Do you tell him to take credit or do you tell him give Hanford the um, credit? I'll tell him to take the credit because I don't think Hanford will mind. That's funny. Okay, we're going to choose take. And if he does mind, it's a fun bit later. <laughs> In attempt to help get a big episode, you encourage Mitch to take credit for Mike's story. Unfortunately, Hanford has told this story on Damn the Sloppy it. Boys podcast before. Of course, we the wouldn't have thought of that. The fans take way too much pride in pulling out the receipts on poor Mitch. You would. Margo gets a weird amount of backlash yep. for some reason. <laughs> the do low downloads combined with this negative feedback is enough for the network to not renew the show. Unfortunately, Emma, you failed. I failed. You got an F, and the network gave you an F. Wow. Now, the nice thing about this game is we can go back and right our wrongs. Try again? Okay, We're that's gonna what go the in case of emergency to, in is. In case of emergency. Okay. And we're gonna so go we back. tell him to give Hanford credit, I guess, here. We're giving Han But he can still tell the story, so it doesn't lose that much, I guess, if we just give it the credit. You tell Mitch to say the truth. He can share Hanford's story, but he should think of something else to say. He shares a devious story involving Wu-Tang, Dano, <laughs> Micah's Changton, and Frailbot that absolutely crushes on the show. We call this in, in the biz a Doughboys, <laughs> a classic Doughboys dub. The network grade is an A. The host grade is Thanks, an A. Thanks, Mitch. Margo points out, this is, the, uh, we're wrapping up. We have like, uh, another scenario here. Okay. This is a new scenario. I like it. Margo points out scandal in the title scandal on the menu. That's the name of the podcast. Yeah. Feels a little misleading. It's not really scandals. It's more just people sharing their crazy stories. So mm. maybe some true crime podcast people, um, they could help provide some more like scandalous stories, um, something a little more. Yeah. That feels a little more that way and not For just sure. like a, what's a crazy food fight you had as a kid. Yeah. I kind of agree with that. I'm trying to think of another name other than scandal on the menu that would be more accurate to like a crazy story. Sorry, Skidmark official says Margo got the Doughboys bump. <laughs> Skidmark is Amelia. Amelia. Thank you, Amelia. Yep. I love you. <laughs> yeah, Margo did get the Doughboys bump, <laughs> but only after we went back and our in case of emergency and yep. retconned our game because um, uh, I'm a great F producer. <laughs> <laughs> All of your you kept providing. <laughs> it was only a matter of time. You kept providing A options across the board. Um, 
It was a matter of time. It's so it's just it's funny how the my brain immediately hears these things. It's like in the moment I'm just like, okay, 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 we gotta fix it. Yeah, just we fix got it, this, just fix it. What are this. my options? What are my options? What's the best? What makes everybody happy? This kind of goes back to what we were saying on the last slide of like introducing people outside of the circle mm -hmm. to potentially maybe bring in something new. Yeah, broaden your audience a little bit because <laughs> I'm assuming if I'm working on this new show with Margo, it's a food show. The Doughboys fans are aware they might already be here. Yep. And maybe it's time to open this fan them up to a different fandom that we don't necessarily have yet so that might be some true crime podcasters uh -huh. that also could be a fun uh like this is where i feel like the name would have to change though you could do scandal on the menu as your patreon show where you do a true crime spin on yeah. like crimes yeah. that happened in restaurants or like mm -hmm. something like that where a meal a crazy meal is part of the story but then like the main show would have to be slightly different than scandal It'd be like I like where your brain's at. This so is are, where are I need like a wagger in the room. Yep. I think I agree, yeah. Okay, so you are going to bring on the true crime podcasters. Why not? Seems like new guests could help the show. A few popular true crime podcasters agree to do the show and love even it. do a guest swap. We love that. We when love When they do your these. show, their audience follows, and it brings a nice little bump to the downloads. Host grade A, network grade A. However, Thanks, my favorite in writer. order to do their show... The true crime podcasters want you and Margot to work a graveyard shift. Why does everybody want me to work a shift? <laughs> At a cemetery. <laughs> okay. They say every true crime podcaster must experience a touch of death, a touch with death, before fully immersing themselves in the world of true crime. Emma, the floor is yours. Is this something you would do? I don't think so. I think this is a lot. Of, this is a big ask for I your podcast guest. I mean, the swap is nice, but this is a lot. I've lost people in my life, and I've had ghost experiences. Is that does that count? Can I count that? Seems like Emma's leaning leaning no oh, on no, the graveyard fail? shift. <laughs> you would. <laughs> you wisely avoid this weird offer and avoid death. Congratulations yeah. on dodging a bullet, or in this case, a shovel. Your podcast continues to grow, resulting in the network picking it up for a season two. Thank you God. win. Emma Erdbrink, congratulations. If you had chosen working it, uh, you would have been I killed. I would have been murdered. Yes. And uh, that's what happened to Matt Apodac last week. He Matt got was, murdered. He got killed in Aww, a car Matt. accident. Wow. Um, I mean, Matt, I technically failed and we had to go back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, but this had, was, I get to take a Hail Mary. This was awesome. Congratulations. Wow. Um, I'm so excited about my new show. I think this is our first dub. Um that that's it. We win. That's the, that's the pod. Cool. I love it. Um, thank you so much for being here. Thank Is you for there having anything me. Anything you would like to promote right now? I mean, I assume most of you know of my shows, Doughboys, High and Mighty, Good Christian Fun still comes out one one Thursday a month. They're a fun time. Nice. Uh, Ask Rana, which they're texting me now looking for their episode for tomorrow. It's oh, coming, I, I promise. <laughs> uh, no, it's cool. It's cool. I didn't plan my morning well. I was late getting here. Look, it's Monday. What are we going to do? Uh, so as far as plugs, check me out on social media, Emma Tree, E-M-M-A-A-T-R-E-E, -E -E, everywhere. And then if I do anything, it'll show up there. Emma, you're the best. I'm you're honored the best. to have you here. I'm so this honored to so finally cool. see the studio yeah. and be here. This is awesome. I love it.